Hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Paul Saraja and I'm very pleased here to share with you a challenging structural case from cardiovascular innovations. The case I'm going to show you today is a case of an aorta to right atrial fistula and we're going to be discussing some of the challenges and management that go into uh, treating such patients. These are my disclosures. So the case is a 77 year old man who two months prior to admission had been treated with surgical aortic valve replacement with a 21 millimeter Edwards Magna valve and also repair of a ventricular septal defect. These surgeries were performed for staph aureus endocarditis and he did well initially but then was re-hospitalized for recurrent heart failure. So here are the baseline transesophageal uh, views showing four chambers, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. And on the right-hand side with color flow imaging, one can see the regurgitation arising from the aortic valve and entering into the right atrium. Certainly these are off-axis views to show the degree of regurgitation uh, between these two chambers. Here are some additional views here. Again, more four chamber views showing again that regurgitation. And there's definitely communication here between uh, the aortic valve annulus and the right atrium. So you can think about how you would approach this from a transcatheter standpoint. And over the next several slides, I'm gonna show you how we did it at our hospital. So the first thing we did is obtain a CT study that allows us to put the location of the defect exterior to the aortic valve prosthesis. And the purpose of that is so that we can then use the image intensifier to find the appropriate angle to engage the defect. Here you can see we're in an LAO view and the image intensifier is then uh, used and positioned in this area with an aortogram to identify the leak arising from the aortic uh, valve area and then entering into the right atrium. With this view, you can then see how a wire would then be passed exterior to the aortic valve prosthesis and directly enter the fistula into the right atrium. If the image intensifier is not positioned in this view, then the wiring would be difficult because it would be difficult to see if one was behind or in front of the prosthesis. In this view with exteriorization, you can see that the fistula is easily seen and with that, a wire can be easily passed as one can see here. This is a simple six French multipurpose guide, uh, guide catheter and this is a straight <clears throat> glide wire which has then been passed retrograde across the aortic valve into the right atrium. And this is confirmed on both floral as well as an echocardiogram. Here's a TE view, a short axis view showing the uh, aortic valve prosthesis here and the wire uh, that is entered through the fistula into the right atrium. We then pass a wire up into the right atrium and we are then going to connect a rail uh, and exteriorize that rail so that we can easily exchange and pass our delivery sheets across the fistula. Here is a 15 millimeter gooseneck that has been advanced from the right femoral vein through a 20 French core dry seal catheter or sheath and this gooseneck is positioned up in the SVC. The wire has exited uh, the multipurpose catheter, gone through the fistula and is looped in the right atrium and is also positioned up in the SVC for snaring and removal. Now this case was a little bit challenging because as we snared the wire and then attempted to remove it, there was entanglement uh, with the pacemaker as you can see here. And this entanglement actually took a considerable amount of time to undo. Uh, with each wiring and snare attempt, we kept getting entangled until finally we found a position that was free of entanglement as one can see here. This is the rail that's created uh, again, going retrograde uh, from the aorta through the fistula into the right atrium. There was snaring in the SVC and then exteriorization out of the right femoral vein here. And with this rail then created, we are then able to advance our delivery sheets uh, one by one to place our plug devices. 
Here is an 8 French uh, 90 centimeter flexor sheath that has been advanced uh, from the right femoral vein, and this is advanced over the wire quite easily. One thing to keep in mind is that this is a 90 centimeter sheath, and this is important because a lot of devices are, are 100 to 110 centimeters, so you do need a short delivery sheath uh, to um, pass these devices. Another important point is that these flexor sheaths have very long dilators. As you can see here, this is the end of the sheath, and the dilator extends up here, and this dilator is, is sometimes difficult to visualize. So one has to be mindful of this dilator and its location, uh, because if this dilator is passed uh, without monitoring, it could easily cause injury. So as <clears throat> the sheath is in advance up to the aorta, uh, we watch this on echo, and this is the sheath here again entering the fistula. Uh, and, and there's already uh, a decrease in the regurgitation you can see with the sheath placement there. And with that, uh, alongside uh, the wire, we then can extrude a 14 millimeter AVP2 device. And one can see here is that uh, what we've done is we've passed uh, the, the delivery sheath over the wire, and then next to the wire, we've put the AVP2. And this is important because if one needs to either remove this device or place additional devices, one can then do that sequentially with the rail in place. Uh, if the rail is not in place, then one would have to rewire, re rewire uh, with the glide wire and recreate uh, the passage of the delivery system, which could be challenging with these plugs already in place one by one. So you can see here again the fistula has started to close with the placement of the AVP2 device. We then go in sequentially so that 14 millimeter device is laid out along the fistula as you can see here. And then right next to it with the wire still in place, we then go over that rail with an, uh, the A-French flexor shuttle again. It's reinserted over just that wire. And this is made possible uh, by the 20 French dry seal sheath because the dry seal has the balloon occlusion cuff which seals nicely around the flexor shuttle as well as the delivery cable as you can see here. Without that balloon cuff you would have bleeding in the femoral vein uh, where the venipuncture took place. We then uh, repeat the maneuver, uh, and this is uh, uh, following uh, two uh, uh, plugs that have been placed here. This is a distal disc of the second uh, device. This is the first device that's been placed. We then place uh, two uh, AVP2s right next to each other, and you can see here that the wire is uh, still left behind uh, as a rail in case we need to uh, do an additional device or exchange the current devices for larger ones. We then repeat the sequence with the third 14 millimeter plug. We go over that same wire, uh, uh, exterior uh, to the two delivery cables, and then we place a third uh, AVP2 device. And you can see here, there's a three plugs that have been placed here uh, across the fistula. And with that, uh, uh, the uh, regurgitation is markedly improved and all the devices are then released. Of course, uh, before the release, you will want to confirm that there's no impingement of the coronary arteries, no impingement of uh, the aortic valve leaflets, and there's adequate reduction of the regurgitation uh, or fistula communication. And this is what it looks like on Transisoft Geo Echo. You can see the plugs here placed across the fistula. Some of them will hang outside the fistula because of its serpiginous irregular connection. And this is the elimination of the regurgitation with those plugs in place. Here's some additional off-axis views of the plugs. And here's a nice 3D view showing how these plugs will lie next to each other and occlude that fistula. So the key points in this case is that beware uh, of pacemaker wires when you're snaring in the right atrium. It's very easy to be easy uh, to become entangled with them, and you certainly don't want to be pulling on those wires as you're creating your rail. And uh, second key point here is that as uh, you're closing these defects, uh, I strongly recommend the use of a rail and an anchor wire technique uh, in order to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the fistula closer. And with that, uh, I'd like for you all to be mindful of CVI 2020, which has now transitioned to a digital meeting uh, and will be happening uh, this coming July. We will also have a series of webinars uh, for, uh, for you all to uh, view and uh, certainly uh, welcome your participation in these. If you have any questions regarding this case, please feel free to reach out to me and I would be happy to go over those with you. I can be reached at P 
S-O-R-A-J-J-A at gmail.com or through the CV Innovations website. I look forward to hearing from you.